Welcome back and today I want to talk about recovering Synology RAID. It's going to be a very quick video because a little while ago, I don't know if you guys remember, you know, flatter me, perhaps you did. Um, I did a video regarding the difference between RAID and SHR and Synology Hybrid RAID. And while I was doing it, I was doing lots of different tests where I was building a RAID and degrading a RAID and that sort of thing. And then I realized I don't actually have many videos about these processes and largely because I take for granted I do them so often. And then I realize a lot of you probably have never done these things before and you might be looking now. So what I'm gonna go for is a few mini videos where I'm going to show you some of the standard RAID processes that you're going to encounter. And I'm gonna talk about today, probably one of the most important ones, what to do in the event of a RAID fail. Namely, one of your drives is faulty. One of the main reasons anyone enters into um, a RAID enabled device is because they've got a large amount of storage and they need to protect themselves from hardware failure. Remember, RAID is not a backup. RAID is protection from the failure of a disk drive in terms of hardware. And the R in RAID, of course, stands for redundancy. So in the case of this device that we were using for other tests, those that remember admin test box, old faithful here, it was a three disc RAID 5 array. Now, what I'm gonna show you today applies to all RAID levels. And I'm talking RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10, SHR, not RAID 0. RAID 0 is a problem unto itself, but all the other RAIDs where you have at least one disc of redundancy. And what's happened is my three disc array um, suffered a one drive uh, failure. And I did that because I had to pull one of the drives out for the video. So what you would have got in that scenario is the NAS beeping away like crazy that one of the drives has failed, but you can still access all of your data thanks to the device and parity data. What I'm gonna show you in this video is how to introduce a new drive, because take my word for it, it is so, so simple. So you don't even have to power down the device either. Right now, as you can see, there's the RAID 5 suggestion. It said that one of the drives, uh, the space has degraded, there's problems. Uh, and it reported a failed hard disk. And I have to introduce a hard drive of at least that capacity. And that's because I've got four TB reds inside this device and you have to replace it with a self-same drive in order to have a stable RAID environment. So you would remove the defunct drive, the, um, the problematic drive. And once you introduce a new drive, the following will occur. Just before I do that, as you can see the alerts there, it said there's a problem, it's entered degraded mode because um, one of the disks has failed and it's still running on two of three disks. You insert a new disk as I'm going to do now. I know you can't see it, but take my word for it, I'm doing that. And what will happen here is that new disk drive is going to need to be spun up, which is what it will do. And then you can set about repairing your RAID. Um, so we'll look at the volume there. There's our degraded RAID there and we're gonna be able to do our quick repair of that. And as you can see, the new drive is added here. And I've made sure to add a space between the disk drives. So those are the two that are in the same RAID array. And they're in that same storage pool in storage pool one. And this new drive, which is not initialized. What I'm gonna do is now add this drive to the RAID. So we can um, add it to, to the row. We can create a hot spare if you want. Uh, in a hot spare, I should add, in a hot spare system, you add a drive that's always running in the background that the system can hand over to in the event of a RAID failure. That's kind of the main reason for hot spare. That's when you leave a drive in there consistently to pick up that RAID repair. And what I'm gonna do now is slowly go through the steps of how to add this drive to the existing RAID. Head over to the storage pool option and go to here. And if you look up under action, you can see the word repair. Click repair, it finds the drive. There it is, same model. There's that bay that it was in. You make sure that's ticked, you move forward and it will say the new disk will be completely erased and added to that array. And it will be added to storage pool one, thereby repairing your RAID protection. Remember your data was still accessible even without this drive added. Now. Do bear in mind a RAID repair can take a little bit of time, but don't worry, it will be done in the background and once again, you can still access all of your data even though the RAID repair is taking place. As you can see, there's initialization of the new disk being added to that RAID array. It's going to now check for parity consistencies to make sure everything's still running fine. But once again, during this time, you can still access your data thanks to that parity. 
There you go, let's choose an arbitrary file. There's a media file, 600 meg. I'm just gonna download that file. As you can see, I can still access all of my data. I can download, I can listen, I can play, I can watch, I can do whatever it is that I want to do on that NAS, even during the rebuild of the NAS. There will be a drop in read and write speeds, but in a little while, depending on the size of your NAS, and by a little while, I am talking 10, 12 hours plus, this new drive will be added to the RAID array and things can return to normal. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to be doing other videos about building RAIDs and checking RAIDs and RAID consistencies and of course data scrubbing. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Do buy your NAS from the guys at span.com. Do learn about NAS at nascompares.com. And finally, if you've got a question, why not send me a message via Twitter at Robbie on the Tube. See you later.